Today, we're going to talk about Midnight Solar's SPDs, both the AC and DC versions. We'll go over what they do, the specifications, where that you can install them, how I have them installed, and lastly, places that I'd recommend that you install SPDs on your solar setup. So you might be asking, what is an SPD? How does it work? And why do I want to have one? So this is a DC rated SPD from Midnight Solar. This one happens to be the 600 volt version. And I'm going to briefly explain my setup so you can understand how it's wired up and why it's wired up in this way. So I have 24 solar panels that are feeding this inside disconnect box. I also have a combiner box outside which has a disconnect as well. So the 24 panels feed into the outside combiner box and this disconnect with a gauge wire. There is a total of four ground rods outside for the solar array and that connects to the ground wire. Now, what an SPD does is it takes any power that's coming in from your red or your black wire, which would be your positive and negative for DC, and it will shunt it to ground or send it to ground if it goes over 600 volts. Because once again, this is a 600 volt version. Now, that may happen if you have some sort of high voltage spike. I don't want to say direct hit from lightning because very few things can actually tolerate a direct hit but this is made to send to ground any high voltage spikes. So it's gonna go through one of these two. It is then going to hit the SPD, and if it's over 600 volts, it's going to send it to ground. Now, I do have my ground system set up that my entire location is all one common ground. The shop, the house, the solar array, all the panels, it is all one common ground. So there's no difference in potential between any of the grounds. Now, I do have that ground wire, which is coming into this box, which is coming from the solar field. It is going to hit this bus bar along with the output of the SPD. And you can see that I have another bare copper six gauge wire. And where that's gonna go is all the way over to my combiner panel, which then connects to all of my 12,000 XPs to the grounds there. But more importantly, it goes to my house and then connects to the ground structure that's there. And it also connects the rest of the shop's grounds. I have a ton of ground rods throughout the property, but everything is tied in together. So. To understand this, let's just say that there was a high voltage spike. It hit the red power wire. It goes through. It hits this SPD. It is then going to hit this ground bar, and then it will go straight to the combiner panel and then dissipate throughout the ground, which is throughout my property. Even though I have my 12,000 XPs connected to the same ground infrastructure there, it will not affect the 12,000 XPs because they are not directly in line. So that's for a DC version. Once again, positive and negative, go into your SPD, and then the green wire, which is the ground, connects to your grounding system. For your AC SPD, and Hopefully you can see that this is lit up. I took off the cover of this panel. This is a live panel. So I'm going to show you. Obviously, I'm not going to touch anything. So the SPD is installed. If you follow the wires up, I have a 30 amp, 240 volt breaker. I have the one side of the phase, which is red, is connected to one side of the breaker. The black wire which is not negative, that is the other side of the phase, because you gotta remember, AC and DC is a little bit different. If you're thinking DC, well, black is your negative. But if you're talking AC, black is 
the other side of the phase. So you have red on one side of the phase, you have black on the other side of the phase. So they're both connected to this breaker. And it's a 30 amp breaker, which is what I needed. So it would connect to both sides of the phase. And then the green wire, as you can see, go up, it goes to my ground bus bar, which everything connects together here. And I'm using this kind of, not only a combiner for my three inverters, but I'm also taking all my grounds and combining everything here. And then this comes out and then goes to the house service panel. And then the house service panel has its ground rods there as well. So all of this is all tied in together. Everything is one big ground. You don't want to have multiple grounds on your property because then you can have a difference of potential. But as you can see, this is lit up. Now this one is a 300 volt, volt version. So you have 240 volts, which is going to go to your main service panel. If for some reason it goes up to 300 volts, then this will start kicking in. So you can have this happen either, uh, even though that you have your, your power line underground, you can still have some sort of voltage spike come in. And this is protecting my inverters from that. So let's just say I have this 175 foot underground wire going to the house. And for some reason, there is a tree that's close and that tree gets hit by lightning and it goes down. You wouldn't want to have all that feed back in to your inverters. So that's what this protects is your inverters. On your service panel, you're going to want to install one of these as well because you can have dirty power come in. Say there's a really bad storm and a line gets hit by lightning and it kind of travels through your, your subdivision and hits a lot of houses with a big spike, well, you're going to want to have one of these at your service panel to dissipate that so it doesn't affect your loads like your electronics in your house that are connected to that panel. So this is the 300 volt AC version. For the DC version, they make two sizes, 300 volt and 600 volt. Now, my system has an open voltage of approximately 380 volts. So since this is over 300 volts, the next size up is 600 volts. But if you do have a solar array that is under 300 volts, use the 300 volt version instead of the 600 volt version. So you see how it's installed in my DC setup. And then you see how it's installed in my AC setup. So here's the two places that I have it. Now you can also add an additional one, a DC one at your solar field, and you can have one on your DC disconnect on the inside if you have one or, or really close to your inverter, and then have a second one outside, and that would give you some additional protection. I do have some smaller inexpensive ones that are out there. I look at those as being the sacrificial lamb. So those would be taken out before it even hits these. But I would recommend definitely getting the midnight solar versions just because they are very robust. And if anything is going to protect you from a high voltage event, it's going to be the midnight solar SPDs. So hopefully that helps with understanding how I have my setup done. But more importantly, what are SPDs, why you would want to have them, and where you should install them. If you have any additional questions on this topic, please leave them below, and I'd be more than happy to talk about it. Now, all of mine I purchased from Signature Solar, and they have the 300-volt AC version, the 300-volt DC version, and the 600-volt DC version. So that's where I got them at. I know that they have a lot of sales going on, so definitely check it out and please use my discount code. I think that it would be a good addition to any setup to protect against those sort of events. Thanks again for watching Mike's Garage.